going ahead with our next session it is my pleasure to invite professor john doyle from rmit melbourne australia uh, i would like to introduce a little bit about professor as well as the institute uh, dr john doyle is a senior lecturer in the school of architecture and urban design at rmit he is the director of master of architecture program and a visiting professor at tokyo institute of technology is a practicing architect a co-director of common design studio he was the co-curator along graham christ and yoshiharu uh, sukamoto of the 2019 super tight exhibition at the design hub in melbourne and the contributor to the 2019 sewell binale of architecture and Ur urbanism 2019 schengen um, uh, binale of architecture cities exhibition the 2019 Shenzhen um, uh, Biennale of Architecture, Urbanism and to the 2020, uh, sorry, 2010 and 2012 Venice Architecture Biennales. Welcome, Professor. Um, we have uh, a little bit about RMIT Architecture, which is an accredited architecture school based at RMIT University's cap city campus in Melbourne, Australia. The school focuses on design and has been internationally recognized as a leader in design practice research and practice-based learning and teaching. RMIT Architecture offers postgraduate degrees in architecture and urban design, as well as a design practice-based PhD program. Uh, Professor John Doyle, uh, I would like you to take over the session now. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay, so uh, I've got a presentation here. I, I'll share my screen. Yes. Right. Uh, it's always risky. And uh, no. Can you see see that? Is that? Can you see that? Yes. Now we can okay. see. It. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I can't see anyone now. Uh, so if, if I'm running hideously over time, please interrupt me. Um, so, well, thank you for having me again. My name's uh, John Doyle. I'm currently the acting head of school at RMIT and I'm also um, the head of the master's program uh, on a permanent basis. So I, might, I understand a lot of you might be interested in coming to Melbourne or working with us at some point in the future. Um, I, most likely you would be coming in at a master's or a PhD level, so I would be the person you'd be dealing with. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about um, our school, the work that we're involved in and some of the, the ideas that underpin our uh, organisation. So, so first things first, uh, in Melbourne we, we launch every presentation or every meeting by saying woman Jaker, which is the uh, Wurundjeri uh, word for welcome. Um, and we, we acknowledge the people of the original custodians of the land on which we uh, conduct the business of our university. So very close connection to country and to uh, the first peoples of our land at, at the core of everything we do. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the acting associate dean, and I'm also a practicing architect, as I think was in the introduction there. Um, it's very important that everybody who teaches and is engaged in research at RMIT is in practice of some form or another, and uh, I'm no exception to that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I get down uh, further down the presentation. So uh, RMIT architecture is primarily focused on design and it has an international reputation for design excellence. So uh, you'll hear me go on about this quite a bit. Design is really at the core of everything we do. It is the, uh, the most important part of our uh, teaching curriculum that makes up the majority of the work of, of the courses that you undertake would undertake in any of our programs. Um, but it's also a lens through which we, we view everything. So it, it, every aspect of architecture is, is focused onto the, the act of design and, and pointed towards that. And that, there's no exception to, to that at any part of our uh, degree programs and into our research practice. Um, 
what we're most interested in is what we call um, ideas-led uh, venturous design exploration and design innovation. So to be venturous, uh, venturous is a word which is, is sort of a uh, neologism which describes um, acts of speculation and projective thinking. So to be venturous is to be brave and take risks. We're interested in um, cultivating a, a cohort of students and perhaps teaching staff as well who are um, interested in speculating and thinking about what architecture is not, not what architecture is now or what it has been necessarily, but thinking forward and projecting into the next 10 years and thinking about what it might be in the near future. Um, and really trying to land that speculation through a, a close disciplinary understanding. I think that's really important for potential for students and, and kind of people who are going into practice because obviously what we know now is not what will be in the near future. And over the last 18 months, we've seen what that might look like globally. Um, we like to say that some of our differences are that we have extensive links to industry. We're very closely embedded into the practice of architecture. Um, our teaching as staff are all uh, practicing architects of some kind. Many of them have won multiple awards. Um, we also have uh, a large cohort of uh, uh, in what we call industry practitioners or sessional uh, academics who come in from practice to, to teach studios and will often drive the, in, the intellectual agenda of the school. We also call that, those are venturous designers. Um, so exam some examples of the kinds of people that we have on staff are uh, Associate Professor Paul Minifee and Jan van Skyk, who are the directors of MVS Architects. Um, they're both uh, senior members of staff uh, within the organisation and they've completed a number of very highly regarded buildings uh, in Australia and I think also in Malaysia. Um, our, uh, our graduating thesis program is run by um, lecturer Amy Muir, who is um, a highly regarded practicing architect and she was also um, the chair, the president or the, the head of the uh, Institute of Architects in, in our local, in our state, in the state of Victoria for, uh, for two years. She was also the emerging architect, the Australian National Emerging Architect of the Year a few years ago. Um, uh, we have adjunct professors who are highly regarded uh, in the form of Ashton Raggett McDougall, who've completed a number of success, success, major buildings in and around Melbourne, they, and they also teach into the programs um, uh, and we run practice studios in their office as well. Um, to give an, an example of the kinds of outcomes or graduate outcomes we expect from um, people, uh, architects emerging from the school, you can look to the fact that uh, in certainly in Australia and so largely internationally as well, a lot of our graduates have had very significant um, careers after finishing. So uh, uh, six of the last um, eight, I think this slide slightly out of date, uh, uh, of the gold medal um, building of the year in Victoria, buildings of the year in Victoria have been won by uh, alumni of our, uh, of our school, including a number of buildings that we occupy um, as part of our uh, campus. Most recently, I actually don't know who won it last year. I can't remember. It was such a strange year. But the, in 2019, uh, again, another building that was designed by an alumnus uh, of RMIT, Peter Elliott, won the, the Victorian uh, gold medal and I believe the national award as well. And so we, we, have a, we, we hope this to, will continue to happen into the future. Uh, of, in the last 10 years, uh, what have we got here? Eight. Eight of the last nine uh, emerging architects of the year have been uh, alumni of RMIT, including two of our staff, Ben Milburn and Amy Muir. And a number of, all, virtually all of the people on this page uh, teach or have taught into our programs as well. So to think about, I mean, obviously, virtual, the virtual world is preeminent now. I'm talking to you via Google Meet. Most, a lot of our teaching takes place over Zoom um, currently because of the, the ongoing pandemic. 
But the ambition would be for you to join us in our uh, campus in the city of Melbourne. And so um, our, we, we have what we like to call a metropolitan laboratory, um, which is obviously comprised of our, our campus in the centre of Melbourne in um, one of the most, well, this, almost the second biggest city in Australia. Um, but we also have um, sort of temporary and semi-permanent campuses all over the world in um, the different places that we set up to, to run studio and, and run programs. But most of our teaching and research takes place in this building, which is the design hub, which is designed by Sean Godsell about uh, 10 years ago, um, finished in 2013. And uh, the reason why we like to, we, we, we think it's important um, to situate an architecture school right in the centre of the city is that it allows us to, to learn from uh, the urban envir environment of, around us and to learn from the buildings in which we're situated. Another one of the buildings that you would be studying in is the Swanson Academic Building, the SAB, which was designed by one of our professors, Harry Lyon, and we run um, a lot of our particularly cultural events there, lectures, symposia, and, um, and other informal events. Coincidentally, the, the university pub is in that building. Um, the library and other informal spaces take, uh, occupy what's called the New Academic Street, which is a, uh, an enormous sprawling um, vertical campus of uh, uh, recently upgraded uh, buildings, which have um, an amazing array of uh, social spaces, library spaces, um, informal working spaces, cafes, um, restaurants and things like that, which are part of our city campus. And right on, this, on Swanson Street in the centre of Melbourne. And so it's important, I mean, obviously one part of this presentation is about telling you why we think we're different or why we think we're good or why you should come and see us. Um, but also it's about kind of, uh, in against uh, an ideas presentation around talking about what we stand for and what we think architecture should stand for. And one of the things that we, we value um, most is about, is, is the culture of, of design and the culture of practice and the culture of ideas. Um, and we think regardless of where you go to, to school and where you, or where you practice or what, the, the sort of what you do with your career, this is perhaps the preeminent issue in architecture and it's what separates the good from the bad. And so what we argue is that um, within our school, we, um, what is most important is to set up a culture of learning, which is a vertical and, and in which we're all immersed. So we all learn from each other. Um, we learn uh, from our um, mentors who are in practice um, and who, or who might be engaged in research projects and that we set up studios and learning uh, structures within our programs, which allow people in research and um, engaged in the building of buildings to share with their, share their sort of struggles and their ideas with students who are equally capable of feeding back into that um, process. Um, and so an example of that is um, uh, what you see here, which is a, um, an installation that was in, built at the National Gallery of Victoria, designed by one of our associate professors, Roland Snooks. And much of this, this is obviously a piece of design work which was done by a, a senior architect, but much of the coding, fabrication, and the resolution of this uh, were resolved by graduate and undergraduate students who are engaged, and this is a collective undertaking. So a little bit more about the kind of prosaic elements of our course, this just the structure. I mean, I, I'm only going to talk about the, um, the Master of Architecture, but if anyone has an interest in the Master of Urban Design, I can also talk to that because I teach into it as well. So practically speaking, it's a two-year uh, master's degree. Um, uh, our semesters are slightly different to Northern Hemisphere semesters. I think some of the other people who will be presenting will have similar um, frameworks. But essentially, studio, semester one would start starts in uh, March. You'd need to be in, uh, enrolled in, in February. Semester, and that runs until the middle of June. Semester two starts in the middle of July and runs until November, and then we have a summer break. You can see here the, the units that are in pink and red are our design units. So each semester you have a design studio which comprises 50% of your total course load. There's three units of professional practice which cover, cover law, business, uh, ethics, marketing uh, in, in the first instance. And then they look to the expanded role of the architect in big projects and infrastructure in the second unit 
And finally, um, into future practice and entrepreneurship in third. Um, we do one unit which is called Asian Urbanism, but in reality is a, is a theory course that um, uh, explain, allows you to look into how um, architects and architects practice and how cities have been formed in the Asian continent as a way of beginning to judge your own work. And lastly, oh, sorry, and there we have three design electives which allow you to engage in bits of technology, learn new skills, engage in research projects such as the pavilion I just showed you before. And your entire, the two years culminate in a, a design thesis which we call major project which is, accounts for three quarters of a semester which allows you at which point we expect you to take a position on architecture on the culture of architecture and I guess make some claims about what you stand for and what the future of architecture might be. Um, so the design studio is at the core of, of our program and, and is sort of around which everything hinges. So what does a design studio mean at, at RMIT and what do you do in a design studio? So at the start of every semester, we have what's called the balloting presentation, which usually takes place in a week before semester starts. Every semester, you get to choose from about 20 different studios. Every, like, every studio is different. We have a series of different curatorial polls, which we try to sort of position our studios in, but you could take something, everything from something that looks at large-scale city design, something small-scale, such as housing. You could look at um, a theoretical project or, or a literary take on architecture. A lot of our expertise is in um, robotics, um, augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, and so the expectation is that you will nominate a series of preferences for what you'd like to do and we'll put you in one of those studios and you can take, that, take on that project for a semester. At the end of every semester, you present your work publicly and it is exhibited um, in the building along with the work of everybody else. And so the expectation is that across the course of the three semesters that you before going to major project is that you'll take three different studios um, which will um, this little button on the left sorry um, you'll take three different studios which will allow you to triangulate a position that uh, sorry about that on architecture so you know you'll you have a different you can compare different different attitudes so here are some examples of um, uh, different studios that ran last year. Um, uh, if you're interested in, in coming to see us or coming to work with us, I recommend you log on to our issue page, um, RMIT Architecture, and, and that has all of the posters from studios that have run in the past, and you can read the text and see what has been done. And I'll talk a little bit later about our digital exhibition from last year that you can come and see some of the work. So an example here of a studio is uh, the Terminal Drive studio. This was run by NH Architecture, which you can look up. They have a major uh, practice here in Melbourne. And so this studio was looking at um, uh, the design of a new precinct adjacent to the Melbourne airport, um, which allowed, yeah, and obviously looking at very large scale issues um, at an urban design level. And as you can see, at the end of semester, every studio presents publicly. Um, usually, it's not very really public these days because it's all online. This semester, we're planning on running everything, most of our studios face to face. So again, we'll be back in the building. But the idea is our building is incredibly public and porous. Um, members of the public can come in, students from other university, and you present in front of your peers uh, and in front of your mentors as a way of kind of uh, critically defending and kind of establishing a position over a series of semesters. Um, here are some graduating students at the exhibition. Again, all of the work is, uh, of graduating students are exhibited in the Design Hub Gallery. You can look at some examples of what that looks like in the past, obviously not last year, but hopefully next year we will begin, we'll have a, uh, an in-person exhibition again. Um, here's some photos from the NH Practice Studio. So, Every semester we have a series of what we call practice-based studios, and in those studios, they're usually two or three per semester. Um, those studios will be uh, run in the offices of those practices, um, and often we'll be working on a project which is uh, critical to that practice. Um, and in this semester, it was run by NH. A previous uh, practice studio has been run by March Studio, again, 
pretty well known around the world. They're a Melbourne-based office, but have done stuff in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Los Angeles, and Paris. Um, and this is an example of their work. That was a really great studio where their offices have, uh, they, they comprise both an architecture's office, but also a fabrication workshop. So students got to build large-scale models in their warehouse. We have um, a strong global mobility program. Every semester we run, well, except for recently, we usually run traveling studios, um, uh, run with partners uh, based internationally. Um, uh, and we every sem first semester we usually run a studio uh, based in the Netherlands with MBRDV and the Y Factory, and that's run for three semesters. I suspect that will run in the second half of next year, hopefully when travel uh, starts to open up and becomes a little bit more free. Um, last year, so in 2019, I ran a studio with UN Studio based out of their Hong Kong office. Um, every semester, every year we run a studio in partnership with our urban design program, which looks at uh, one or another Asian city, and in the past that's been based out of Shanghai. Quite likely um, that will be moving to Indonesia next year, but we, know, we don't know. And every year we have a studio that runs in Barcelona um, in partnership with Floris and Prats. Ava Prats is one of our, is our uh, professor of urbanism based in Barcelona. And she runs a studio every year in uh, December. Um, so here are some examples, some images from our uh, studio with the Y factory at TU Delft um, and MBRDV. And students obviously get to visit some of their projects in the Netherlands during that studio and work from their office. Um, here's a lot of happy faces having just finished with Vinnie Mas in the middle and our uh, associate dean head of the school there with the black hair, Vivian Mitsugiani. So here's a photo of our end of semester exhibitions. Usually we get to, we all get together in this space, the, the RMIT Design Hub Gallery. Um, obviously not very COVID safe at the moment and we can't do that until things um, change slightly in terms of vaccinations and things like that. But hopefully if you join us in, in perhaps next year or the year after, we'll be in a position to ho hold one of these exhibitions again. And the idea is that everybody gets together to celebrate the work of completing students, to give out a series of awards um, and to, to kind of catch up. We, we find that a lot of our um, uh, affiliated practices will come to these graduate shows and effectively go graduate shopping looking to, to sort of place our talented um, exiting students into positions. Uh, again, we every semester we have a series of um, uh, visiting lecturers and, and uh, we've been very lucky over the last few years to have lectures given by very significant um, international architects, many of whom are affiliated with us, obviously, Kevin Carmody is um, a graduate of RMIT and he's had a fantastically successful practice in uh, the UK. Vinnie Mas is teaching into our program. Ame Pinos was collaborating with one of our lecturers um, you know, and so on and so on. So perhaps just to start to finish up, I'll talk about our design electives, which are kind of another opportunity for you to do interesting things. Um, but also that sort of dovetails into some of the, the projects, the research projects that our uh, university is working on. Um, so um, the one of the, the electives that you could, a lot of our electives deal with our robotics workshop, which is on the, in the basement of our building. We run a series of workshops in collaboration with um, uh, the ETR from the ETH from Zurich. Um, and as a part of that, you would get to learn and can use the five axis uh, KUKA robot. Old axis have lots of axes. I'm not sure exactly how many axes it has. And so we have a bunch of these things in, in our basement and they're always being updated. Um, you can work on, in this case, they developed, they developed a tool head for cutting foam into complicated forms. But lately, we've been doing a lot of work with clay and pl um, plastic printing. Happy faces from a few years ago. Um, one of the things that we've been developing a lot of expertise in and spending a lot of time on is the, working with the Microsoft HoloLens and using augmented reality um, tools to kind of experiment with how buildings might be built in the future. Um, this technology is kind of pretty interesting because obviously the robot 
um, comes at a huge cost, but these headsets are increasingly cost effective and allow us to begin to think about how buildings might be built, I guess, freehand without measured drawings. Um, so this is uh, an alumni from RMIT on the left, one of our lecturers in the middle, um, and that they're standing in front of a pavilion that was built um, in Tallinn in Latvia, Estonia, I think, um, you, uh, using that technology. So they developed a, an app which runs off of the Microsoft HoloLens that allows you to visualise complex form in, in situ, and, and that's how they bent all of these forms to a particular shape using those, the HoloLens. Um, I've shown you this pavilion in, uh, in the NGV. Um, perhaps thinking towards how some of the other areas of interest of our school, we have a very strong focus on um, city making and urban design, urbanism, particularly uh, emergent and um, new models of urbanisation and rapid urbanisation. And so here is an exhibition that was done in collaboration with uh, Mini, the car maker, um, looking at how um, super small, and super tight, um, density might be kind of integrated into urban fabrics as a kind of way of adding delight and, and kind of compactness to cities. Um, this is a project that was, has been undertaken with Eva Platz and Ricardo Flores in Barcelona, where they've looked at um, the revitalization of the Pablo no district uh, in Barcelona, and they've been, Flores and Prats have been working in that space for many years, and our students have collaborated with them on a number of designs and, and exhibitions. Um, perhaps lastly and most, ex most excitingly, um, this is a project by um, uh, former, he's just left actually, Associate Professor of ours, Mauro Baracco. It was an um, installation at the Venice Biennale um, two years ago or three years ago now, uh, whenever that was, 20, 2018. Um, and again, this was a project looking at how um, a catalogue of uh, of endangered grass species in, in Victoria. And, and a lot of this work and the cataloguing and design of this installation was done by or with in collaboration with students at RMIT. So that sort of get, brings me to the end of um, my presentation. Um, if you'd like to know more um, about our programs and about what we stand for, you can visit our um, Valerie website, architecture.rmit.edu.au. We try to keep that updated as much as, as possible. Perhaps a more um, regularly updated uh, platform is our Instagram page. We try to publish out everything we do on there to keep an, a permanent record of all the activities of the school. You can find us at RMIT Architecture and hashtag RMIT Architecture. Um, if you're interested in coming, it's worth taking a look at that so you understand perhaps what we're looking for, what we what we value, um, as you start to put together a folio um, and a, and a, a um, interview, or will be and a, a, um, a video presentation, which is what we ask for. We should mention that. Um, some more stuff from that. You can also look at our uh, twenty semester one and two 2020 um, exhibitions at rmitarchitecture-exhibition.net that has all of the studios and all of the graduating thesis projects from last year. It's quite lucky in some ways that, you know, we only shifted this all online because of COVID, so it's available there as a record. Um, and lastly, you might be interested to see um, if you visit this website, which is actually my studio from semester one last year, which is links out of that page that I showed before. This is interesting. This may be interesting to you because it actually involves the work of one of, uh, I think, of an alumna, alumna of um, RVCA, which is Hashitha Rutheranjaya, from pronunciation, hopefully not too bad. Um, and she, she was an, an alumna of, of RV, came and did our urban design program and, and can, completed a studio with me last year and was obviously a really exciting and very talented student. So we'd be very happy to, to see more faces from RV and, and hopefully there's an opportunity for, to see you and, and have more collaboration in the future. Thank you. I'll just stop sharing now. Um, Thank you. Not sure if there's time for any questions or if that's, if that's part of this.
Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Doyle. Uh, I'm Alicia. And hi. Uh, hi. Um, I have one of the questions that we had from our students earlier this morning. This morning, we were having a presentation from an educational uh, institute, uh, education uh, service called IDP. Mm -hmm. And there they mentioned that RMIT is one of the leading universities for doing masters in Australia. So uh, our students want to know just uh, like, uh, because you're maintaining such high quality of education. So if they're going for their admissions or if they're applying to your university, uh, mm -hmm. what other things that you, are your focus areas when you look for a student to uh, enroll? What are the things that you want the students? What are the qualities that you want, want the students to be uh, equipped with? Okay. Um, good question. Uh, so I'll give you the, the very prosaic Part of this first, we when you apply, um, when we, people apply into our international pathway, we, we ask for obviously the usual things: transcripts, um, a statement of personal personal statement, a CV, things like that. Um, testimony from a completed degree, or sort of evidence that the degree will be finished in time to, to start. But we also so we, we do look at those. Um, but what we're most interested in seeing is the portfolio. Um, that's perhaps the first, uh, the most preeminent um, document that we, we, we give the most um, uh, precedence to in our, um, in our process. And the other thing is a, we ask students to submit a, a short um, pre-recorded video, uh, which is a way that, and I'll talk to both of those items as a way of perhaps just answering your question. So the folio, there's a couple of things that we're looking for. Firstly, at a broad level, we're interested in understanding the way you think. Um, we want to see evidence of design process, um, uh, the ability to, to, look, uh, to sort of have an idea or a critical position on architecture uh, and the built environment, and to be able to demonstrate through iterative um, experimentation and testing uh, uh, how that can be rigorously followed through into a building proposition of some kind. We don't have, uh, you know, what a building can be is pretty open for us. Um, so we, we, we're interested in people who have a very, you know, might come from a very traditional background or a very kind of um, um, conservative view of architecture. Not everything has to be radical. But what we want to see is the, the ability to have translated an idea into a, um, into a, a form of some kind or, you know, an, an architectural outcome. We, I can't prioritise that, that's, that word idea strongly enough and, and criticality. Um, so it's not just about, you know, a lot of the stuff that appears on our website might look um, uh, gratuitous in terms of um, colour and formal experimentation, but in, in sort of setting up our studios and setting up our... Um, uh, uh, and, and assessing work, we're looking for the ability of a student to be critical and to have a strong position on architecture. And so the folio is, is where we're, we're, looking, we're looking for that in, in entering students. We're also looking for technical skill in terms of representation and basically and building knowledge. So um, we want to see that you have the necessary or the requisite skills to be able to represent your ideas um, and also to understand how to put a building to, to together to a basic level. Now, we understand that somebody who's coming into um, either an undergraduate or a graduate degree does not need to know how to build a building entirely, but we don't have, uh, you know, we do expect a base level, a, the ability to understand enough about a building to be able to kind of evidence how an idea might apply to building, if that makes sense. A good example of what that might look like is if you think about a competition entry standard. So if, you, if you're thinking about um, sort of putting your folio together, if you look at great examples of how competition projects have been represented, competitions obviously are not fully, like most competition entries haven't been fully resolved in terms of how they go together as a building. What is most, prior, most important in a competition entry, what judges value the most is the ability to illustrate why one or another building is more and more valuable than another. So it's, it's creating and evidencing 
the importance of the, the idea or the proposition. So that's what we want to see. Now, that's a big ask, particularly for students who are second and third year, but perhaps the best way to see what that looks like is to look at the work that we, that exiting students would, um, uh, would, would uh, sort of, you know, our major project students are, are, are illustrating. So if you look at, you could look at, for example, actually, no, I've got a better idea, sorry. If you go to our exhibition website, you can look at what, it, what projects look like when they're completing the degree, but you can also look at bachelor students who are completing our third year um, studios here um, and what we call, yeah, the undergraduate degrees. And then that gives you a sense of what we're effectively comparing folios against. I would strongly recommend um, uh, re reworking your folio. So particularly when you're a, an undergraduate student, you, um, you, know, you finish with a degree of skill that you don't, that a lot of the work didn't have when you did first year or second year. So if you, as, as you're preparing, and this goes for any degree program that you're applying to abroad or in, in, inside India, I, I would presume, I, we get a lot of, very raw looking folios that are, um, are they look like it, they haven't been touched since the work was done. Don't be afraid to redo the work. Don't be afraid to edit. And don't be afraid to use, um, only show the images which you think are absolutely the best. So plenty of white space and, and sort of careful composition are critical so that, you know, we don't, we kind of, we know what we're, we're looking at the best things. Um, in terms of the interview, um, or the, so it's not an interview, it's the video presentation, we're looking for an understanding of who you are, um, why you want to be an architect, why you want to be at RMIT, um, how do you think, what do you think is important, why do you, what are your kind of, what inspires you, what architecture you think is, you know, is, a, is most exciting in you know, anywhere really. We'd like you to talk about some of your projects and talk through the ideas. Um, ultimate, and also, I mean, to be, there's a, a degree to which the interview or the video presentation is really about understanding your level of um, presentation skills. So how do you talk about ideas? How do you talk about the work? Um, how do you present yourself? Um, so, uh, you know, it's a way of understanding both the, the folio and the, and, the, and the video presentation are a way of, for us to judge whether you would be, um, you would have success in our program. So in, in, when we're seeing these things, we're thinking, you know, we're obviously projecting whether we think that would fit and be kind of, you know, would work well with, with the, um, the kinds of things that we do. So again, if you, if you look at the, the work that we've got online, if you look at whatever videos you can find of student presentations, um, you can see the way that it, the way the work is presented, the way that work is talked about, and written about, that would be a good way to, to kind of understand what we're looking for. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, uh, so I've got, there's a question here from someone about scholarships. Yes. Uh, at the moment, we, I, at the moment, there's not a lot of scholarships. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, there, I believe there's one scholarship which is uh, for um, female architects or female students. Um, I'm not sure uh, whether that's available uh, to international students. A lot of the scholarships have been frozen because of the, the COVID situation. Maybe one thing pathway, if you're looking for funding to travel into Australia generally, is to look at the Australia Award, I believe it's called. Um, I'm just Googling it quickly. Uh, yes, I think that that is a, a scholarship which is offered by the Australian government, which gives a pathway to um, internationals, to students from abroad to come into Australia and it, it sort of comes with accompanying visas and things like that. So that might be worth looking at. Generally speaking, we. We don't offer, there's very few scholarship available to international students, unfortunately. Right. Professor, uh, speaking about COVID, um, how is it presently? Uh, do you have a hybrid uh, format with online and uh, offline uh, classes for the newer uh, 
So we are in the process of working out what that will what it will be for the 2021. Um, in 2020, we had um, from March till the completion of the year it was entirely online. The plan for 2021 is to have 50% um, of our courses online, uh, face to face, logically, and 50% of it online. So um, we would expect that studios will be running. Um, face-to-face -face pr primarily, and all other courses will be running online. Having said that, um, in 20... So we have a lot of students who are stuck overseas who can't come to Australia currently. So there's quite a few students in, in China, at Southeast Asia, and I'm, this is, I, suppose, I suspect in India as well. Um, for those... For students who are unable to travel to Australia for legal reasons, we will, or for health reasons or whatever, we will make courses available online. Um, that won't be... That will only be... That will continue as long as travel restrictions are in place. I would assume that by the time travel is freer, that we will be more or less moving back entirely face-to-face -face with some augmented online resources and things like that. Um, but next year, it, there will be a, a mixed mixed mode. This year, sorry. Right. Thank you, Professor. Uh, so we had sent out a, a registration form uh, where these, the participants could ask a few questions. There was mm -hmm. one person who uh, says, I'm interested in urban design, but should I take a master's in architecture and do specialization in urban design or take up master's in urban design? This probably would also uh, reflect upon practice or, uh, you know, uh, joining a firm later on. Well, I would suggest that the, the lot, if, you're, if you're interested in doing double, doing both, um, the, the, the best way to do it is to do the Masters of Urban Design, a Master of Architecture, sorry, first. Because if you complete a Master of Architecture, um, you, you have... So the Master of Urban Design is a two-year program for people without a Master of Architecture. If you've completed our Master of Architecture, it's only one additional year. So you, you could do three years um, and have urban design and architecture. So the best, the, the best advice would be apply for Master of Architecture and try, attempt to get into that um, because that's the, that's the more logical pathway. Having said that, people have done the... the urban design degree first, then gone and done architecture. We just don't have a, a, a more, we don't have a pathway. It, it's, we don't have a pathway agreement. So if you finish architecture, then you have to apply for credit against the urban design degree. And more often than not, we will, so if you finish, finish urban design, you have to apply for credit against architecture. Usually we'll give that one year of credit. So you only do a one year of architecture, but I can't, I don't know what will happen in the future. So there is no formal agreement the other way around. So if you wanted to do both, I'd do architecture first and then do urban design. In terms of um, employment, um, I find in my, in my opinion, the urban design degree is m more valuable for people who are considering practicing uh, internationally because of the nature of our urban design degree. Now I haven't talked much about it today. I'd be happy to, Follow up. If anyone's interested in urban design, you can email me. Um, uh, it's John Doyle at RMI. Uh, Alicia has my contact details, so I, I just didn't want to put it in the in, in the document. So that if it goes online, obviously my email address can get spammed. But you can contact Alicia, and she can connect you. But um, I, I'm happy to pass on information for that particular program. Our urban design program, particularly in the second year, focuses on um, large-scale uh, urbanisation, rapid urbanisation and, and emergent technologies, um, which is different to a lot of other urban design degrees which might look come more out of a landscape tradition and, and look at kind of public realm and such things. Um, I, I tend to find that that sets up our graduates to work really well in places like, for example, in China, where you have very large projects that are un undertaken very quickly. Um, I have no sense of what the, the architectural kind of context is like in India, so I won't profess to be an expert there, but we're also doing work in, in Indonesia as well, in Vietnam, um, with large, in partnered with large practices who have 
significant sort of like significant projects looking at infrastructure and things like that. So if you wanted to go and you wanted to practice into Australia, you probably would be fine with just the, um, the, the master of architecture. If you wanted to have a, an extra string to your bow, to take you into the realm of kind of those bigger projects internationally, I, I think that's where the urban design degree becomes um, pretty useful. Um, you know, so my, the studio that I run, for example, we start to look at um, GIS you know, uh, tools. We look at sort of how scripting and digital tools allow you to make, uh, to look at very large data sets on, on la and large scale and to, to begin to kind of code, um, uh, code into the sort of the urban and territorial scale. Um, but that's pretty useless in Australia where, you know, we have a population that's the size of a city in China, so. <laughs> right. Uh, we do have another question in the chat. Oh, yes. How is the construction project management uh, considered a course in the university as in terms of Masters of Architecture or Masters of Technology or a management course? Well, we have a project management separate degree, Masters in Project Management, which sits within our building faculty. It's a slightly different, uh, somewhat removed from us. So in terms of our um, uh, degree programs, there's a the professional practice units cover uh, project management um, to a small degree, uh, but we don't. Uh, so we, we what we teach into those really is what um, the institute, not in, sorry, the registration board of uh, so the Australian accreditation board will look for in terms of um, the examination for architects, which to be honest with you, compared to other other uh, countries, is pretty minimal. So we teach you. Um, the, the traditional mode of procurement from, you know, first being hired to undertake a job through to the completion of the job using the, the, the standard building contract that the, the um, registration board expects you to know. In the second unit of professional practice, we talk about more complex engagements. So we look at like large scale infrastructure projects. Um, partnered projects, public-private partnerships, and, and the other novated and other sort of more complex contractual arrangements. Um, but we don't do project management as in we don't, we don't sort of talk about how one deals with projects on site, largely because in the context of practice in Australia, um, architects don't do that or are dissuaded from doing that under the course of an ordinary engagement. Some people do go in, but there is a whole separate discipline of project management, which is sort of sub, somewhat separate to architects. So it's a peculiarity of the way that our, of our, uh, way that our building industry works that we don't, really, we don't really handle site supervision as much as some other uh, architects in some other country. And so that sort of is you know, reflected in the way we teach it. I don't know whether that, for better or worse, that's just the way it is. Um, some people um, will finish out the Master of Architecture and then do a one-year postgraduate diploma in project management in the other schools. Um, it really depends on where you want to go. Yeah. And uh, post-graduation, what has the trend been? Are a lot of graduates uh, practicing in Australia? Do they move out? What is the accreditation outside Australia? So, well, until about, we're in a recession at the moment. So in Australia, as is most, many countries around the world. Um, so currently I'm not sure, um, to be honest with you, the, the graduation, the graduate employment figures aren't, I presume aren't great because, you know, there's been a, a massive job, you know, lost generally across the, the country. Before 2020 though, we had an, uh, what we call, we had a graduate employment outcome rate of about 80%, which translated to about 80% uh, of our graduates being placed in full-time employment within six months of finishing their degree. Um, so that we're obviously pretty proud of, or we were proud of. Um, so th there are really great outcomes for students. Now we don't have any record of students who are, well, we, ha we have little record of students who've gone offshore, gone overseas to practice. Um, we keep in touch, of course, but, you know, it's not, not formally. So that's really just the, the people who have stayed on um, and who continue to, to stay in practice in Australia. 
Um, in terms of what it takes to become an architect here, uh, if you stay in Australia, you uh, it's a two year. You have to work for two years um, after you've graduated uh, in a practice that an accredited architecture practice, and then at that point, you can sit an exam, uh, which will give you if you pass, will, will allow you to practice in Australia. In terms of um, I, I'm not, a, not an expert on this. Some of the, the people who are more, who, who sort of deal with international migration might be able to answer this better. But generally speaking, there are strong pathways for permanent residency for people who have completed with a master's degree. So a lot of the people who finish our Master of Architecture are able to, um, if they're able to place them, get placed in work, they can then either be sponsored by the practice that they've been placed in or through other mechanisms apply for permanent residence. Once you have permanent residence, if you stay in the country for, I think, three years, I think it's five years in total, you're a, you can become a citizen. So it's, it's a, not everyone wants to do that, um, but I guess the, the, the thing to say is that we, we usually hope and we, well, if anyone who wants to stay on after they've um, uh, finish the the expectation is that you won't just leave you'll be able to continue working here if you want to um, that doesn't always work out some people can't find work that they're happy with some people just want to leave some people want to go overseas and you know to Europe or to America or to Asia to find more opportunities but a lot of our international students will just will stay and continue working with, with good practices they're either affiliated with RMIT or you know in the industry at large. Right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is it in the interest of time. And uh, thank you for taking uh, uh, time off your busy schedule. And, you know, I understand the time difference. And so it's been great uh, having you with us. Um, thank you for participating. You're very welcome. Us. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Um, time difference is no problem. It's the end of the day here. So it's. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And by all means, please keep in touch. Um, I'm very interested in what's going on in India and uh, would love to, to see what you guys get up to and, and love to, to speak to anyone who's interested to come see us. Yes, thank you so much. We will keep in touch. Thank you very much. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, so we will now break for lunch. Uh, we will resume back at 1 p.m. Thank you all for your patience. I request you all to be on the platform, continue to be on the platform. Thank you.